Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today's saint is Saint Monica. She was born in the year 331 in Northern Africa. She herself was a Christian, but she married a pagan man who later on in life, actually really on his deathbed, converted to Christianity, thanks to Monica's prayers. But before he converted, he made his wife suffer very much. So she was in what we would call uh, an unhappy marriage for most of her life. But she endured it with patience and united her sufferings to those of our Lord and offered her sufferings for the soul, the conversion of her husband and obtained that grace. St. Monica is frequently associated with St. Augustine and his conversion, and that's true. We'll talk about that in just a second. But before that, by her silent suffering and union with the sufferings of our Lord, she was able to convert her husband as well. And she, in fact, exercised a, a real apostolate of, of suffering in the sense that in her little town, many women were in a situ similar situation to her own unhappily married and suffering with husbands who did not treat them well. So she ministered to them, likewise teaching them how to suffer with patience and not to waste their suffering, but to offer it up to our Lord for some good purpose, to give it some sort of a value rather than just to waste that suffering. Monica had three children. Augustine was the oldest of the three, uh, the one who caused her most grief and sorrow. He strayed far from God. Monica pursued him and prayed for him. He finally converted in the year 387 at the age of 33. Soon after, Monica died with the consolation of seeing her son Catholic. That's the one thing she wanted before death. She obtained it and died soon after. And what I'd like to focus on just briefly is just the power of suffering, the redemptive, co-redemptive value of suffering, potentially at least, if we use our suffering well. Because, because it's not enough just to suffer. We all have to suffer. And we hear that term, redemptive suffering, offering up our suffering. Well, for suffering to become redemptive, it has to be embraced and offered up to our Lord. So it's not enough just to have suffering in life. We can waste that suffering if we rebel against it, if we refuse to accept it, if we complain about it, etc., etc. That suffering is wasted. Whereas it's only suffering that's embraced that we can say is really offered up to our Lord. As our Lord embraced his cross, we have to embrace our own. Then it becomes redemptive suffering. So, uh, a little episode from the life of St. Monica. At Carthage, Augustine became a Manichaean, which just for the sake of brevity, let's say it was a big heresy back then and intrigued him intellectually, he became a heretic much to the, uh, added to his mother's grief. Instead of seeing him become Catholic, he became a heretic. And the doctrine of the Manichaeans, Manichaeans was, by the way, pretty bizarre too, so his mom all the more had much to grieve. So she chased him out of her house, later on called him back, and uh, took her grief to a, a saintly bishop, Saint Simplicius. And this bishop to console her said to her, with the words that are now famous, the child of those tears shall never perish. Meaning a, a child for whom you are offering up so much suffering to the Lord, so many tears, surely will not perish. That suffering, you're giving so, you have so much suffering and you're giving it value. It will have its effect, the bishop assured her. And such was the case, as, as I mentioned before. St. Augustine did convert, but why? Because his mother fulfilled her mission of giving her son not only natural life, but supernatural life as well. Our Lord, uh, our Lord calls us to be collaborators in the work of redemption. He calls each and every one of us to be collaborators in this work of redemption. People obtain grace not directly from God, but through other mediators that he associates to himself. Parents for their children are, are in a particular role of responsibility and mediation, we would say. So she used the, the suffering, which was, was for her so great, because it was her own son that was going astray, she used it to pay the price, so to speak, contribute to paying the price for his redemption. 
first conversion, first turning from sin and turning to God. And the suffering of parents, especially mothers, can have this great value and, and can do great good for their children. And if, 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 they're, if mothers, fathers, mothers, but mothers especially, truly embrace their sufferings and offer it for some good purpose, give it a meaning, give it a value, then it can have value and tremendous value. Uh, just how much value is difficult to gauge. For example, St. Monica died right after the conversion of her son in 387. She didn't see what happened later on in his life. He became a priest and a bishop and a theologian and a doctor of the church. And of the, all the doctors in the church, the 35, I believe, today, one of the principal ones, certainly in the West, the major doctor of the church. She obtained for him much more than just a conversion. She obtained for him... <laughs> The, 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 the grace to, to truly contribute to the shaping of, of the future of the church. He is a reference point for everything that comes after him. Now, applying this to Our Lady, obvious application, but let me just draw it out and make it really explicit. The suffering of Our Lady, who is our spiritual mother, also has a great power. If our Lord associates each and every one of us to his work of redemption, in a special way, he associates his mother. That's why we call her the co-redemptrix. Because her suffering for us, her children, has value. Christ wants her suffering, together with his, to pay the price of our being set free from sin. She suffered not for the wrongdoings of her own son, but for the wrongdoings of us, her other children. That's the mission Christ gave to her. And Our Lady's sufferings obtain grace for us. And we are indebted to her. Why? Because, because in the spiritual order we have a father and a mother, redeemer, co-redemptrix. We have a debt to both of them because both are involved in setting us free. By God's will, yes. By God's own provident design, yes. Because what Adam and Eve did together, the new Adam and the new Eve undo together. For this reason, we must have a special devotion to Our Lady. We must venerate her sufferings. Be grateful to her because her sufferings obtained for us reconciliation with God. And one more thing I would add. If we unite our sufferings to those of Christ, we must also unite them to those of Our Lady. This unlocks for us the full power of the redemption. Because we have to ponder how the redemption happened. Our Lord with Our Lady. Our Lord, Principal Redeemer. Our Lady Co-Redemptrix. We have to unite our sufferings to the sufferings of them both. That unlocks for us the full power of grace that's contained therein. The fullness and the completeness of redemption. So the takeaway is what? So, one, we have much suffering in our life. We can either waste it or make it actually obtain grace for us and for others if we embrace it if we offer it up and in offering it up we have to unite it together to the sufferings of jesus and mary then then our suffering will be a source of grace for us and for others it will unlock the fullness and the completeness of the work of the redemption Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever.